Welcome to our continuing education webinar. We're going to discuss how to Google Google, how to be a good Google watcher, how to separate the hype from the trends, what's going on. I know everyone is busy. Uh, we want to help you be better and more efficient at seeing the trends in SEO. So we have embarked on trying to do one a month at least of a continuing education webinar. Uh, this is to help people stay on top of the trends. Uh, they're free. We're really trying to be very hands-on step-by-step here. And today we're going to focus on this whole issue of being a Google watcher, how to watch Google and um, stay informed without driving yourself crazy and having enough time to go you know, watch TV or go to the gym and do other fun things besides just constantly read the Google blog. So what's our agenda? We're going to talk about why we care. We're going to talk a little bit about the Google algorithm and what the updates have been recently. Uh, we're going to talk about con combating information overload. And there's my, my Skype doing its best to give me information overload. And we're going to talk about never stop learning. All right, so let's talk about, first of all, let's turn off this annoying Skype. So I forgot to turn off Skype, so let me turn that off here. Bear with me. All right, so let's talk about why we care. So why do we care what Google does? Uh, obviously because it's the main gateway. So I have sort of what I call my duh slide. So people care about Google. People care about SEO because it's such a huge pathway to how people find you, to how people get to your company, your product, your service. And SEO, of course, search engine optimization, the art and science of, you know, manipulating Google and Bing. Uh, to show up at the top. This is why we care. This is why we're Google watchers in a huge way and a little bit of a Bing watcher too. Bing is important, although no, not nearly as uh, much as Google. So the, the, one of the takeaways I want you guys to, to go you know, home with or go back to your business with is I want you to think about having a model of how SEO works so that you can look at this model and look at what's changing and sort of position where things are changing in a model. And the easiest model to think about is sort of starts with what are those keywords that people type into Google. And we'll talk a little bit about Hummingbird and this whole buzz about, oh, keywords don't matter anymore and other silly ideas that came out there recently. On page and off page, these are changes to your website. These are your links, social mentions, et cetera. So a simple model, got to know your keywords, got to set your website up in the correct fashion to talk to Google. You've got to get links and other external references. Then we want to get the click to get the landing, and then we want to get the conversion. So very basic stuff. Now, everybody who's watching, we're going to send out the video later today, so don't freak out. You'll get the video. So just sort of, first of all, you know, be a Google watcher. So let me go over here to Chrome. Pull up Chrome here if it'll cooperate. And let's just talk about sort of basic search stuff. So again, let's not be signed in, and let's just do a really basic search, one I always use in my classes, motorcycle insurance quote, right? Motorcycle insurance quote. Okay, and let's just be sort of a Google watcher, okay? So we're going to talk about Hummingbird. We're going to talk about keywords, okay? So one of the things I want you to take away is common sense, you read so much in the blogosphere about the whole hummingbird update. Keywords don't matter. Keywords don't matter. Wait a second. Do you type in keywords to Google? Are you just going to type in, hey, Google, I want to go ride my motorbike? Or are you going to type in, I need motorcycle insurance? So start to be a little aware of how you search, of how normal people search, of what people type in. And you're going to see that those certain keywords, for lack of a better word, are very important. Search screen, top left, top right. Ads, natural positions, one, two, three. Very basic model. Got to know your keywords. Got to manipulate your website, get links, et cetera, get to the top. Then what do you want to do? You want to get the landing. On the landing, you've got to have your action, et cetera, et cetera. Pay attention to Google. Type in the word pizza. Notice, wow, that is really different than what we see on motorcycle insurance. Here's your carousel which is driven by Google Local, type in something like Halloween, and you're going to see, well, maybe Halloween. Let's type in ghosts. They were making fun of ghosts today. Ghosts, you're seeing the knowledge graph appearing. So start to pay attention to the Google screen. Start to have a mental model and start to place what you're reading inside of this mental model. 
Now let's talk a little bit about SEO. And this little class today, this little continuing education module, you know, I want to give you a mental map because it, there's so many blog posts out there. You'll drive yourself insane if all you do is like stay on Twitter 24-7 and read the blog post. It's too much. So let's talk about SEO in general. SEO is an empirical science. There is a measurement to it. You can measure what works and what doesn't. So whenever you're reading something, think about going and doing a test. And if what you're reading is actually being deployed by Google, you should see changes. So we're going to talk about Hummingbird. Hummingbird is the latest buzzword. You know, is it an algorithm change? Is it an update? How do we perceive Hummingbird? What do we mean by Hummingbird, et cetera, et cetera? The, this is sort of where the origin of this entire session came. There were so many blog posts after the Hummingbird announcement that said, keywords don't matter, everything's new, everything's different, don't use keywords anymore. It was like you know, just a, a cacophony of crazy content. So I want to ask you, go and do an experiment and just take out the keywords from your web page and just put vague content like allegedly what the bloggers are saying and see if that works. And if it does work, then what you're reading in the blogosphere that keywords no longer matter, you can just do whatever you want with content, is correct. If not, not. So don't forget that SEO is very much grounded in, in a, quote, reality of testing what you see on Google, and so you want to be a good watcher. You want to experiment and measure, and this goes for your own website. So as you're sort of thinking about, you know, hey, you've decided to spend an hour with us here, you should be measuring your keyword rank, you know, weekly, monthly. You should be looking in Google Analytics at your inbound uh, search queries. I know we're losing a lot of search data, but what what's happening with our website, and we should be measuring that month by month, week by week. I have a lot of people that are saying, oh my gosh, I got slammed by Penguin, I got slammed by Panda, and I'll say, well, do you measure your rank? Well, no, we don't really measure our rank. Well, how do you know? How do you know if you're not being systematic? So the first sort of takeaway, it's an empirical. It's based on science. It's based on facts. The facts about you and your website, the facts about the algorithm. So let's just remind ourselves of some really good, simple best practices about measurement. Now I have all the links in here for you. I want to show you just, just really briefly a couple of my favorites. Rank Checker, a free tool from SEO Book. You can put your keywords into this um, tool. You can measure your rank systematically. And then you know, hey, is this impacting me and my website? Very, very important data. A nice little tool here, you, this you, one you can do on the fly. You put your website in here. You put your keyword in here, you know, like we do SEO classes. You measure your rank, we're number one. You put in, you know, SEO tutorial, I'm going to tell you we don't do well on that search. So I can measure my rank, and then I know where am I and is that changing. Also, of course, your Google Analytics to measure how your traffic's changing over time. And if they roll out an algorithm that really hits you, you're going to see right away your rank is going to decline, and then you're going to see your analytics will decline after that. So, so don't forget, you've got to measure. All right, let's talk about you know me. Let's talk about us. I don't care what's happening to the entire SEO industry. I care what's happening to me. What's happening to me? So, Hummingbird, sort of the latest and greatest update. You know, sort of the scuttlebutt. It seems to be having a, a tendency: mobile search, natural language search. So if you're in the mobile area, if your customers are using mobile, it could be very important to you. If you're selling industrial fans, people aren't really searching for industrial fans on their mobile devices, right? Not so much. It's not pizza. So it's going to vary. The impact is going to vary based on you and what you want. So don't forget, it's not about the whole algorithm. It's about you and what's going on to you. All right, let's talk about lifelong learning. So the fun, and I do mean that with all seriousness, the fun of SEO is that it changes relatively rapidly, and we've had a super fun year because Google is changing a lot of stuff uh, that impacts SEO. So you want to make a commitment 
to lifelong learning. What do we mean? You know, I'm going to talk about this as we sort of get towards the end. You want to start having a weekly ritual. Let's read the official Google blog. It's like it's like watching the papacy, right? You've got to watch the Pope. You've got to see what Google's doing. You've got to make a commitment to follow Google at an official level. You've got to follow SEO experts. I don't know if I call myself an expert, but you know, whatever I am, guru, nutcase who follows SEO. You've got to follow people like me, the big journals like Search Engine Journal. You've got to make a commitment to read those, not every day, but every week, every month, to stay up with what the real insiders are talking about. You want to look for evergreen content versus the latest hype. What do we mean here? And again, I have all these links for you. So you have sort of examples of, you know, short and dirty little blog posts that come out. So Hummingbird hit, there's all these little blog posts. This is a nice little blog post. I'm not sure I'm going to consider this, you know, the gospel truth, but it's a quick little blog post. That's a quick post about Penguin, or in this case, um, is it Penguin? It's Penguin Update. That's to be compared to something like SEO, Search Engine Land, which is a great you know, website, too many ads, but they have a nice evergreen, these are the basics of SEO. This is the basic stuff that doesn't change rapidly. Think about as you're looking at content, what content is evergreen, permanent, sort of cut through the noise, and what's just hype? Different purposes. Think about, I hate to say it, right? Remember books? Books are often the more solid content, doesn't change rapidly, but they're good. You know, buy an, a, a book on Amazon and SEO once a year and read the latest book. Think about workshops and trade shows. So rather than just freak out based on Twitter and the blogosphere, make a systematic way to follow Google. And I'm going to show you some tips that I use to keep uh, abreast of what's going on. So talk about as we get started, we you know get people showing up here. So first of all, prioritize SEO because it matters a lot. If your website is where people find you, you've got to prioritize that website. Despite the hype that you read all the time in the blogosphere, SEO is empirical. You can measure your rank on Google. You can measure landings to your website. You can measure conversions. So there's a lot of data points. There are a lot of data points that can measure what's going on beyond just everyone screaming that Hummingbird is this total revolution that's changed everything, right? Make a commitment to be a lifelong learner. Make a commitment. If your website is important to, you know, obviously you guys are showing up here this type of forum to learn um, what's going on. Read all the time, but also measure. And remember, it's really all about me. It's about how it's impacting you or how it might impact you. And these changes are often not evenly distributed across the blogosphere, across, what, across what's happening. All right, so now let's talk about the Google algorithm. This is sort of, I think, why people were like, oh, I'm going to sign up for this web and learn about the algorithm. So algorithm is a very fancy word for how Google works how Google works. So Hummingbird, our most recent sort of buzzword, there's been so many blog posts that have said, this is completely different. Google's totally changed. And if you read between the lines, you read other people, you read the same blog post will say, it's a complete revolutionary change, but you may not have noticed it. Now that's kind of a contradiction, isn't it? So you want to think about this algorithm and what you're reading and have a model of how the algorithm works. So here's my simple model. I use this whenever I teach classes of how SEO works. So SEO is like getting a job. To get a job, you have to have a strong resume. You have to have keywords on that resume, right? You don't write a resume in sort of hummingbird language that just says, I would like to have a job because I'm looking for self-fulfillment. No, you have a resume that says, I would like a job as an auto mechanic. I went to BMW auto mechanic school. That's your website. That's your website. You've got to talk to Google just like a good resume has to talk to the job uh, employer. Then what do you need? You need great references. Those are your external links, your social mentions, your freshness. That's the person who says, hey, take a look at this job candidate. That's your off-page SEO. And there have been changes in the algorithm on both on-page and off-page. Then you get to your landing behavior. This is the job 
interview. You can still blow it in the interview. You got the job interview, but you didn't get the job. That's landing behavior. That's your bounce rate, things like that. That's your success. I have a very simple model, and then as I'm looking, I can look at something like Penguin, and I can say Penguin really is about that attribute of SEO. Panda is really about this attribute of SEO. So start to make a model. I like to use a simple model and then look at what's changing. Now, the core attributes don't change rapidly. They do not change rapidly. The core way we get a job today isn't that different than it was 30 years ago. It's just now the resume is submitted electronically. It's just now they check you up on Facebook rather than call your friends. So there are changes, but there are some fundamentals too. Now, let's talk about why change is hard. Why change is hard for everybody, and that includes Google. That includes Google. So again, I'm kind of responding to this, the latest buzz, and I get so many emails from people. Oh my gosh, what's changing? I'm freaking out. Everything is new. There are reasons why it is difficult for Google to change rapidly, and let's think about why. First and foremost, computing infrastructure. They're, they have huge data centers. There's a rumor that there's an entire barge in the San Francisco Bay and that that barge is a secret data center of Google. That level of infrastructure cannot be changed in this sort of idea that people put out where Hummingbird just dropped in and dropped out. So that computing infrastructure restrains Google from changing the basics really rapidly. The advertising infrastructure, let's talk about keywords. People say keywords don't matter anymore. Well, wait a second. When you go into AdWords, you bid on keywords. So they can't exactly throw out keywords when the entire AdWords infrastructure is built upon keywords. Not going to happen. The human infrastructure, we're all used to using Google a certain way. We're, we're clearly moving towards talking into our computers. But most people are not talking into their computers at this point. And even if people talk into computers, they're still going to use keywords. So the human infrastructure is slow to change. Here's a big one. The linguistic infrastructure is outside of Google. The way people talk, the way people think, shocker, is before Google. So there's a lot of reasons why the fundamentals cannot change rapidly, even though the algorithm can make changes on the margin. Now, let's talk about Hummingbird, because I know everyone knows oh, Hummingbird. There's a lot of hype, and there's some trends. So let's talk about the trend. What are we seeing with this whole Google algorithm change? Google is clearly moving towards natural language queries. This is Siri. This is the iPhone. This is this whole trend in computing towards I'm going to talk to my computer, and I'm going to say, okay, computer, I'm hungry. I want pizza. And the computer's going to infer, okay, he's hungry, he wants pizza. I'm going to suggest restaurants near to him. This is clearly a trend, and this is clearly something Google is leveraging. And that is really, when you read between the lines of Hummingbird, it's part of that trend towards natural language. Now, there's a lot of hype, and I don't want to shoot down the blogosphere, right, because it's, its job is to be quick. So the first things that you read are not necessarily the most accurate. Now, let's go over and let's look at some things about Hummingbird. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that are out there that we're, we're trying to understand. Okay, so, you know, have a little fun here. So here's a, a blog post I kind of pulled out of the blogosphere October 3rd, certain about a month ago. Okay, so... Be cynical. Be skeptical, okay? This is a very quick post. Quality content always wins. And you want to be like a good scientist. And you want to say, really? It always wins? Always? 100% of the time? Quality. What do we mean by quality? What does that mean to Google? Google's a machine. It's a computer. It's not like a human. You could say, oh, quality content, I kind of get what that means. It's good enough. It has to have mechanics to it that are you know, true, that are measurable, that are actionable. Okay, now read this blog post. And again, I'm just kind of beating up on one blog post that was very quick to the punch here. And I want you to be skeptical. So they're saying, okay, so, you know, Hummingbird is coming out and we're going to go natural search. And look at this. Read this paragraph. Be a Google watcher as you're reading the blogosphere about Google. 
The update added the ability for Google to understand context around natural searches. Following up a search for Washington Monument with the question, how tall is it, will return the monument's height. Okay, let's test that out. Let's see if that's true. So let's go over and let's do a Google search and let's do Washington Monument. Okay, great. I'm seeing the knowledge graph. Okay, now let's try the what the guy says in the article. How tall is it? Did it work, did it? It did not understand that I'm asking a question about the monument. Now, it may be true that in the future, Hummingbird is going to be able to take that vaguer search query and look at your previous history and give you results. But it isn't true right now. It's not factually accurate what that blog post says. Now, be a Google watcher, though. Notice how we did a search for Washington Monument. Now, watch this. How tall? Now, look at that. How tall is the Washington Monument? Now, as a good Google watcher, as a Google, you know, guru, right? That's new. That is new. So Google Suggest is clearly paying attention to the previous search and giving you some suggestions. Now think about being a trend watcher. That's working right now. It's possible in the future. We'll get there. We're not there yet. So I don't want to shoot down this blog. He kind of jumped the gun. The blogosphere is often too quick to the punch, but it does have some idea of where it's going. Now, think about where does that impact your own website. There's a trend here. There's a trend here towards natural syntax, towards the way that people type into Google, and you want to optimize that content to how people search. So many people right now are searching, right, how to use the keyword planner. By spitting back at Google the phrase, how to use, in front of the keyword, keyword planner, you can get to the top of those searches. Here's our YouTube video on how to use the keyword planner. So what's your takeaway? Old SEO maybe was just the keywords, keyword planner. Post Panda, post Hummingbird, they're starting to reward us for using natural language queries, natural language syntax around our keywords. So by being a Google watcher, by being a little skeptical, by looking at these blog posts, you can see the hype and the trend. And we'll come back to this zig and zag a little bit. But what I want, the idea I want you to get out there is oftentimes the blogosphere overhypes everything. It goes too far. It goes too quick. People sell magazines by hyping. But there is a trend as an SEO, as a company, as a blogger, as a marketer, look for those trends. So what are the trends and what are the tensions? Let's talk about tensions. So remember I said, hey, have a mental model of how Google works. So mental model on page is like your resume. So what do SEOs do? They try to trick Google by stuffing keywords. What's the response? The response by Google is Panda, which degrades low-quality content, keyword stuffing. Hummingbird, which is going towards natural search queries, latent semantic indexing. And uh, the EMD, which was a penalty against exact match domains. So think about it like a power struggle between the SEO community on the one hand and Google on the other. And these Google updates, it's a little dance between us and Google going back and forth. All of these updates are really on-page oriented. They're oriented mainly towards on-page issues. Not entirely, but mainly. Off-page content, part of your mental model of how the algorithm works, links are very important to Google. So people build links, they manipulate links. The Penguin update, which is the most vicious update of the bunch, is aimed at manipulative link building. So there's a sort of a core tension here between Google and the SEO community, and there's a little dance going on between what they allow and what they don't allow and who does what, etc. Now let's talk about the information community. Okay, let's pretend you're Google, right? You're at the Googleplex, and you're swimming in swimming pools, 
full of money, right? And the, the bathrooms are made out of gold and the store, the floors are platinum, right? You make your money off of AdWords. That's where your money comes, right? So follow the money. What does Google want to do? It wants to sow FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt amongst the SEO marketing community. It wants people to believe SEO is hard, SEO is dangerous, so that you do what? You don't do anything manipulative and you advertise on AdWords. So when they launch Hummingbird, right, Google's hidden marketing agenda, Hummingbird is incredible, Hummingbird is revolutionary, Hummingbird is mysterious. Because it's mysterious, it's scary. It's like a Harry Potter movie. Be afraid, be very afraid. Watch out. Because that makes you, me, everyone fearful. We're afraid of getting slammed by these updates. Therefore, we don't do anything. We choose the safe route, which is AdWords. So be cynical about their agenda. Now let's be self-critical, myself included, right? My beloved friends and the SEO community, they're actually complicit in this. They want you to believe SEO is so difficult, mere mortals cannot possibly do this. So you need to give us a bunch of money as consultants. You need to attend our expensive conferences where we're going to share the latest and greatest because everything has changed and you need to buy our book. So you've got to be a good media reader Look for the core tensions. Look for the core changes. Be skeptical of the agenda of who you're reading. Sort through the noise to get to the main patterns. And then you're always thinking, remember, it's all about me. So you're always thinking, how can I take these trends, these knowledge, these bits of knowledge back to my website, my link building, my social media strategy, and manipulate them, be on top of the trend. So what are the trends that we're seeing? You know, say the last year. Panda update. That is attack against poor content. So what's the takeaway? Don't write poor content, meaning better keywords, better grammar, better natural syntax. EMD, it's an attack against exact match domains with poor content. Hummingbird, the latest, is an attack against poor content and unnatural content. Okay, I don't care whether you call it an algorithm change or an update, it's a trend. Penguin is an attack on link manipulation, and the other big trend that we've seen in negative is negative SEO, which is Google now allows people to go rat out their neighbors. I mean, how Gestapo is that? You can go and rat out your competitor to Google. Those are your negative trends. Now, in the materials, because we only have a short little time here. I have links to all the updates, and there's some really wonderful foundational documents. Most.com has a wonderful bookmark of the different updates. So you can bookmark this, and they'll do the job for you of alerting you to what updates are coming out when it, wonderful for free. Boom, the big updates right in front of you. I've got that link there for you to you know educate yourself. They do a great job. So does Search Engine Land. It's my favorite blog on SEO. They do a wonderful job creating these informational pieces of content on the main updates. You can bookmark those, educate yourself. What is Panda? What is Pingo? Those are your early ones. Now, Hummingbird, it's too early to draw any major conclusions as to what this means but I do have the link for you there. So that's sort of there. Now let's talk about positive trends. I, I'm not a person that likes to be negative. What are our positive trends? Google is rewarding rich snippets, pictures showing, reviews, etc. Google loves Google+, and it's rewarding sites with social authority. It's clearly rewarding sites that have quality content, especially stuff that's mobile-friendly and natural language. So you've got negative trends, positive trends. By being a good Google watcher, you can see the trends. It's kind of like picking stocks. Now you start to see what you need to be doing, where you need to be going. So mental model, rather than just read like a crazy man, right, or crazy woman, build a model. Think of your basics to the algorithm. Those are slow to change. 
They're not going to get rid of keywords. They're not going to get rid of tag structure. They're not going to get rid of links. Those are fundamental to the algorithm. They're much more difficult for Google to just change. There's positive trends, what's helping, and negative trends. And think about putting those into your conceptual model. And now you're calmer, you feel better, your heart, your, your blood pressure has calmed down, and you're able to sort of move forward. Okay, so to-dos at this algorithm level. So think about and understand the basics don't change. They can't change rapidly. They do change, but they cannot change just in a day. Be aware of the difference between hype and trends, and realize that when something's brand new, like Hummingbird, there's a lot of confusion. So take it all with a grain of salt in those first days, weeks, months. Think about negative trends and positive trends. So don't just think Google is slapping people around. It's also rewarding people who do things like enable Google+. And I think that oftentimes the blogosphere focuses way too much on the negative trends and not the positive trends that you can do to show up well on Google. Think about having a mental model. The one I use is job seeking. Google is like a resume, job seeking machine. Build a mental model and fit your trends into where things are changing. Okay, now let's talk about information overload because I know everybody lives in information overload today. Everybody is in information overload. And this is worse in the SEO community because of FUD, right? Let's be honest, Google and the SEO community want you to be confused. They want you to think that you're stupid and you can't possibly do this because Google would like you to give it all your money for AdWords and the SEO community would like you to give them all your money to do SEO for you and they won't want you to know what's going on because that's how they keep you in a state of dependency. So you want to combat that information overload and empower yourself. Everything that we do is about empowering and helping people understand. So FUD, follow the money, fear, uncertainty, doubt, and realize when you see somebody who works at Google, God bless them, but follow the money in terms of what they're saying. Okay, so let's talk about killer storms. So let's talk about hype. So uh, I grew up in Oklahoma, which is a wonderful, wonderful part of the country until there's a tornado. And in Oklahoma, we used to sit in our house, and the house, it was like Dorothy. It would, it would shake in the wind, and we actually have a bomb shelter in our backyard, and we got in the bomb shelter several times. I mean, they have killer storms in Oklahoma. Now, here in California, every winter, KTVU News, which is our local newscast, they will have, you know, Wendy Chikuda or whoever, she'll be out there on the California coast, and the wind will be blaring, and they'll be screaming at you that there's this killer storm coming, freak out, stay tuned, right? That's the hype of the news media, okay? We don't have killer storms in California. Go to Texas and Oklahoma. Those are killer storms or the hurricanes that they get in the Gulf Coast. We just don't have the same level. So the point I'm making is watch out for hype. You know, Hummingbird is a revolutionary change to the search engine. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. So that's the first thing. Now let's talk a little bit about logical errors. As you're reading the blog, Google, etc., there are a lot of logical errors that people make in blog posts. Remember, SEO is very much like a science. It can be measured. This is not horoscopes, right? This is not a theological discussion of is there really a purgatory. This is in many ways scientific. And I have some nice uh, links to logical fallacies, right? You thought, how crazy is this? We're going to take a webinar on SEO and the guy's going to show us, oh wow, I don't know, so I want to see that ad. <laughs> but there is a wonderful dictionary of logical fallacies out here, logical fallacies, and there's a lot of logical fallacies. I think one of the biggest logical fallacies in the SEO community is this fallacy, appeal to authority. Somebody who works for Google will say X or Y, and people will believe it must be true because they work at Google. So I want you to think about logical fallacies as you're reading blog posts, as you're watching. Another really common logical fallacy is the false dichotomy. The either or, the false either or choice. And you're hearing this a lot right now 
with respect to the Hummingbird update. So people are saying, keywords are dead. We don't need keywords. That's a false dichotomy. So you can write really good content for humans, well-written, great content, and you can also have keywords in it that are Google friendly. So it's not right for Google or right for humans, it's both. It's not write post hummingbird in natural syntax or use tag structure, it's both. The logical fallacy is the false dichotomy. It's not on-page SEO versus off-page SEO, it's both. It's not I do social media or I do AdWords, it's both. This false dichotomy is prolific through this industry. So I want to educate you, think about what is a false dichotomy, and you'll see it again and again and again in the blogosphere. So evidence-based, we're going to see how things are really changing. Now, if things are truly changing radically, the different pieces of our mental model would change. So if keywords no longer matter, people would stop entering keywords into the Google search engine. Go and look at, especially AdWords, your AdWords reporting where you do get accurate keyword data, and you're going to see the exact searches that people enter into Google. You can empirically verify whether people are stopping using keywords or not. Okay? If things are changing, your rank will deteriorate, and you'll know you're in trouble. So you've got to measure your rank, and you'll see that. Click behavior would change based on things like picture showing and landing behavior. So if things are changing, things will change across the chain. Remember, you can measure what's happening to you. That's what really matters, not what happens to the whole industry. So you want to realize you can measure a lot. Now, common sense should apply. Common sense should apply. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater as we look at Google changes. All right, now let's talk about information sources. So, okay, so we've got a mental map. We can see the big trends, the pandas, the penguins, the hummingbirds. I've got some nice links to educate yourself if you don't know what those trends are. Let's think about how we educate ourselves. So, I have some nice links, which you'll get um, in the links tomorrow. I have little bookmark links for all of the main Google official blogs. So I separate my information into Google official and SEO experts. And what do we mean here? Google official is something like the Webmaster Tools blog. So this is the nerd blog by Google for webmasters. You want to start reading this blog. It's going to give you a lot of official information on what's going on. Google will generally make announcements of big changes on the official Google blog. Now they populate this with a lot of other stuff, but this is where they'll often put their big announcements. Also think about your Google watchers. And if I put a link here to Matt Cuts, let's talk about Matt Cuts for a second. So the White House has a press secretary right, has a person who's Obama's right-hand man putting out that message that, you know, just wait a few weeks and healthcare.gov is really going to work, right? That's his job is to spin, you know, the current situation to put a good face um, on the administration. Matt Cutts is the press secretary of Google. That's his job. He works for Google. He's a super smart guy, but he works for Google. So you definitely want to pay attention to him and his blog but realize it's the official story. It's not necessarily the unofficial story. So I have all of these links, and I personally bookmark these, and I check them, you know, you know, reading my morning, you know, whatever, or lunchtime, I check them every couple days and pay attention. Now, you also have your SEO blogs. By far, the best SEO blog is Search Engine Land. By far. No comparison. If you only read one search engine, one SEO blog, read this blog. This is by far the best. Great, they give you information. Again, a lot of information here, but if you just separate it and then look for those anchor articles that talk about something, when Panda hit, when Penguin hit, when Ancient Hemingbird, they covered it, it's going to show up on their blog. So I have those blog posts for you. So I think about reading Google official SEO blogs. Now what else? Don't forget your social media. Don't forget your social media. So I have a nice, who would have thought, google.com slash press, they have a link 
of all the official Twitter pages, of all the official Facebook pages. So if you're more of a social media fan, you can follow Google in this way. Now you're going to get quickly information overload, so be looking for those landmark trends like Penguin and Panda, et cetera, as you're monitoring those. Now I have those differentiated for you. So for instance, as you're reading, try to look for articles by people. Okay, this is a quick article. Yeah, you know, read it, whatever. And then I have some articles that are a little bit more, you can just tell the article is a little bit more meaty. So this uh, Barbara Starr, you know, October 10th wrote a really good, very well thought out. You could tell from the tone, you know, she wasn't like killer storm is going to kill us all in California. She had a very subdued, very detailed discussion. This is one of the very best early articles on Hummingbird, and I think it's on Search Engine Land. It's a great piece. So think about reading and going, this is the article you want to read that's going to really help you sink your teeth in it. And, and distinguish that from your more general things, like the general uh, Google SEO starter guide, which is more of an evergreen article by Google, and I you know, use this in my classes. This is more fundamentals, stuff that doesn't change month by month. So you're going to have a good information strategy. So first thing, information, is bookmark the Google blogs. I've got them all here for you in the links and Google your main SEO blogs, Search Engine Journal being your best, I'm sorry, Search Engine Land being your best blog, and then you've got your social media. Now, let me show you a really neat tool that will help you keep up to date. I'm just sort of like an ad for Feedly. So go to Feedly.com, so it's on the screen there, Feedly.com. It's a replacement for Google Reader. It's my favorite. So you set up Feedly, you log in with Google, and you set up your Google Feedly Reader. And then what you can do is create a category. So I have a nice category here called, um, let me show you my Google official. So I have a category. So I subscribe to all of the Google blogs, and I put them into Feedly as Google official. And then when I log on to Feedly, I can just read, and I can quickly scan through all of the, because you could see, right, there's a Webmaster Tools blog, and an AdWords blog, and a regular Google blog. I mean, they're all over the place. And you can't expect the one hand of Google to tell you where the other hand is, right? We know that about Google. Left and right hand, no talkie at Google. So you put those guys into Feedly, create yourself a nice little subset of your Google official, set aside a time once a week, once every two weeks, monitor Google official. Then create another tab called SEO and put your main SEO blogs in here, and then you can read your SEO blogs. So now Feedly has consolidated, has aggregated those primary uh, sources of information, and then you're reading it, and you're taking that information, and you're putting it into your mental model, and you're looking for those trends, and you're starting to say, okay, hey, there's this thing humming, but what is it? So this Feedly tool is a great way to consolidate. Now, I, of course, the fun thing about Feedly, right, I can have humor in Feedly, I can have the Bay Area in Feedly, it's a great little reader for just your personal news sources. So I really, really like Feedly. I also have uh, links to the Dig Reader and the AOL Reader, which are competitors uh, to Feedly. So I like those guys. Those are good. Feedly's my favorite in terms of readership. So I have the links here. You can add them to Feedly by clicking and then you follow the instructions on Feedly to add. What else do I like to do? I like to look. I have a nice bookmark for you of bestsellers on Amazon in search engine optimization. Make, you know, you have, we'll have uh, slow times and fast times in our business. Say, okay, I'm going to read one book on SEO every six months. Look at what's selling on Amazon. Look at what's new. My book, of course, hey, shout out for my book. It's brand new. It's just up there. Read the stuff that's new. People, when they write a book, they put more effort into it. it it's better than a blog post. It's more systematic. So read some books on Amazon. Make a commitment there. I also have links to the main trade shows. My favorite trade show in this industry is the SMX show. SMX is, moves around the country. Uh, it's very much associated with search engine land. It's a very well done show. Make a commitment maybe once every couple years to go to the show. Or 
you can follow a lot of these shows on Twitter, on Facebook, and a lot of the content will be posted to the web. So, for example, on Hummingbird, I have a nice little link to a presentation that was published at PubCon, which just happened in Las Vegas. And even without um, listening to the guy's speech, you can see he goes through and he talks about what keywords mean and how this is another trend, right, the lack of keyword data. So if you pay attention to the shows and the blogs, they'll often post some of the content um, on the websites, on Slideshare, et cetera, and you can kind of go to the show without having to pay to go to the show. That's the idea. So think about creating your information sources and then creating a strategy. So what's your strategy? You're going to distinguish between hype, follow the money, look who's getting paid by whom. Don't forget there are some people that are just plain dumb just plain dumb and ignore those people. Watch out for too early to tell versus conclusive. Hummingbird is still, I think, in the too early to tell category. I think we have a pretty good idea of where the penguin updates are going. Look for your evergreen articles, your more uh, anchor articles, and put those back in your mental model. Have an RSS feeder. I love Feedly and subscribe and segregate your content uh, there. Use social media uh, with some logic. Now, let's sort of wrap up. What's our rhythm? So we're paying attention to what's going on. We have our mental model. Weekly, you know, you've got to set aside some time. So Friday afternoon is your slow time, Tuesday afternoon, whatever. Say so every Tuesday I'm going to spend two hours in Feedly and I'm going to read blog articles. I'm going to look for quality webinars. That's why we're doing our continuing education series. Uh, look for quality webinars that people are producing that will help you get up to speed. Look for those in-depth articles, maybe on a weekly basis. Monthly, quarterly, yearly at some schedule, buy a book. Attend a class. Attend a conference where people who've paid a lot more attention than you have, you know, because you're in your own industry and we're in this industry, learn from those people on some regular basis. Constantly, constantly, constantly refer back to your mental model and look for positive and negative trends. Be empirical. Adapt those into your SEO strategy. So my mental model, algorithm changes does happen, but it's slow. It's not as dramatic as people think. My question mark right now is, is Hummingbird fundamental or is it marginal? Is it marginal? My opinion right now, it seems to be marginal. It seems to be more mobile search, better content, but not the dramatic change that people are saying. Algorithm updates can be very rapid and devastating. When they roll out Penguin, it's pretty rapid. It has been very devastating to some people. So watch out for those. Matt Cuts in particular will give you some warnings of what's going on. Think about your positive or negative trends as they're going. So have that mental model and start to put the information that you're getting in there, and then you're going to take that back to your own company, your own SEO project, and you're going to implement. All right, so wrap up. Let's talk about wrap up. We have a little bit of time for questions. So SEO, I always try to be positive. SEO is really fun because it keeps changing. There's a lot of interesting new stuff. You have to make a commitment to be a lifelong learner. You want to Google Google. You want to become a trend watcher about Google, and there's a method to this madness. So we have a lot of free content. The blogs have free content, et cetera. I've got the link to ours there. Now it's time for some questions on this whole can of worms. How do we be, how, how can we be a good Google watcher? Okay, let's see. Uh, we have a lot of questions. So what do you what do you mean for the off page SEO? What do you mean by freshness? So freshness is, I think, one of the more underrated uh, attributes uh, that Google is paying attention to. And freshness is this idea that they land on a website and the website has news releases or blog posts, and those news releases are fresh. They're new. Websites that don't update frequently, that don't have new content, that don't have one click from the landing page are old, are not updated, and that's a ding. That's a negative against you. The other area that you see this is when you do searches that have reviews in them, 
uh, the, it's not just the quantity of reviews, it's also the freshness of the reviews. So if you're in an industry where there's review marketing going on, you need to have reviews and you need to have new reviews constantly because we don't want to go to the pizza restaurant that has 42 reviews from 2006. I want to go to the pizza restaurant that has 25 reviews of which 10 are from the last year. So freshness has to do with new content, cross-linked content, fresh content. That is definitely part of the algorithm. There was an update a year back called Caffeine a couple years back. That was sort of where that was started, that idea of freshness. Okay, what is an EMD? EMD is where uh, the EMD updates are sort of like, um, they're where you see uh, a website that has the same same has the same keywords or the exact keywords in uh, the domain as the search. So it was a sort of a fad for a while. You know, you'd want to you'd look for like free games, and there'd be websites like freegames.org, right? So freegames.org, the the freegames.org is an exact match for the phrase, and the EMD update was a penalty against websites that had exact match domains but didn't have a lot of content. And this is sort of speaks to my point of it's all about me. If you have an exact match strategy, the EMD update was a huge thing for you. If you don't have an exact match domain, it doesn't impact you. It has no no value. So that it really hurts certain people but not other people. Okay, let's see. How will you work around Google now hiding search information? We no longer know that users find us by searching X, 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 X. Right. So this is sort of not really a change in how Google works, right? It's not a change in what gets to the top of Google. What people are talking about is inside of Google Analytics, uh, you're losing your keyword data. They're not sharing you the keyword data. Um, I probably would do another uh, webinar on that, on ways to adapt to that. I mean, I think one of the most obvious things is to connect your um, connect your webmaster tools to your Google Analytics, and they'll still give you some data. But I think the whole industry is adapting uh, to the reality that Google is a monopoly. They have that data, and they've just decided to be naughty, and they're not going to share that data. It doesn't mean the game has changed. It just means we've lost some very valuable information and there are tactics to kind of adjust to it. Um, makes SEO more fun because you kind of have to use more intuition than you used to have to use. Okay, I'm just sort of jumping around. Uh, this person says, when trying to get our website up to the natural top of the first page, I find the first rankings are taken up by the by the BBB, Yellow Pages, Yelp, etc. So mine is under them. How can I get above them? Yeah, good luck with that, right? So that's the whole link issue, right? So you see this often, you know, on Google, you do a search for, you know, watch repair New York City, and you'll see Yelp. And this is why you have to have a mental model, right? I mean, this is sad, right? Look at that. It's Yelp, 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 Yelp. I mean, this is where, like, hello, Google quality people. This is really terrible, right? That's because Yelp has massive inbound links, massive. So in this search, this is pretty difficult to get to the top. Now, think strategically. What you want to do is, uh, if this were the case, you want to optimize your Yelp listing to try to at least be in the game. In some situations, you cannot win. You can't win against you know, people who are vastly more powerful than you are. So you need to choose searches you know, that you can win on. Breitling Repair New York City, this is one person we've done work with. They show up here because this is a winnable search. This search is not very winnable. It's very difficult because of that problem. So you've got to choose your battles. And in some situations, unfortunately, because of the way the algorithm rewards links, those big listing companies, they crowd everybody else out. Okay, how can Google find manipulative links? Uh, well, the sort of long and short of it is, so if you use some of the tools like OpenSight Explorer, right, so this is a nice tool, 
So there are no really good Google tools for this. There's OpenSight Explorer, there's the Bing tools. What Google does is it looks at a website and it looks at who links to whom and then it makes sort of a quality score idea. So for instance, say that 10,000 blogs link to you or five blogs link to you or something like that and your uh, pizza restaurant, but the blog that links to you isn't really about pizza, it's about everything. It's about Viagra and it's about gambling and it's also about pizza. Well, that's not normal, right? Normal people don't write a blog that's about Viagra and pizza and gambling. That's a red flag that that blog is playing a link game that is being paid for links. That's one way that they find. They also look at grammar. So if the blog that's linking to you uses bad grammar and it's churned out a lot of very low quality as measured by bad grammar topics, that's how you get slammed. There's also a wonderful tool on over-optimization that I like to use. And this little tool, it kind of gives you a, um, let me find the tool here. This tool is really nice. This is more of a link building issue, but you can put in, I mean, we can put our website in here, and you can see that we're a little bit over-optimized. This tool will give you an optimization report. It's sort of a reverse engineering of what's going on, and it tells us, you know, hey, you're a little bit over-optimized for that keyword, which is true. So we want to slow down on optimizing on that word. So that there are some ways to look behind the scenes, and, of course, Google Big, much bigger budget than you or I do, they have pretty good tools now uh, for detecting those manipulative links, and that's what Penguin is all about, is manipulative link detection. Okay, um, can you still get quality links for ranking purposes doing a PR web press release? No. So the press releases, that change in August, that's a little bit of a subcontent. But on PR web, so let's take site colon prweb.com and let's just put in pizza out of curiosity. So here's the California Pizza Kitchen. Let's see if they have a link in here. Okay, so see that link glutenfree.net? So you've got to know a little bit about the game. So this is a press release linking to gluten.net. Right click, view page source, control F, gluten.net. Look right here, no follow. Now, you've got to be a Google watcher. In about June, Matt Cutts was at one of the trade shows. He started to complain about press release SEO. He was talking to different people there. There were some blog posts by him. There was some YouTube video where he kind of said, oh, we're not happy about this. Some of the inside Googlers complained about press release SEO. That was picked up by the blogosphere. That was picked up. It was talked about late August. Google cracked the whip and it basically said to companies like PR Web, you had better put no follows into your press releases or we will take you off of Google. PR Web and the smaller companies complied and that was the end of using press releases directly as a link building tool. So you now would know, hey, press releases are not that uh, important. There's a lot of things that you can still do with press releases. I'm still an advocate of them. But the direct link building got crushed in late August, and you could see that coming uh, in the June-July time frame. So that's a good note to wrap us up on. We try to do these real short, one hour. I know everybody's super busy. I will answer questions by email that we did not get to. Uh, we will send out an email tomorrow with the video link, and we will have another a continuing edge down the road. Maybe a couple weeks we'll do another one. Maybe we should do one on the whole keyword problem. And off we go. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Okay, thank you, Jason. I do want to thank you all for attending today's continuing education webinar. And of course, as Jason said, any questions that weren't answered, he will get to by email. So if you're joining us for the first time today and you enjoyed this webinar, we will also be offering our very popular top 10 free tools for SEO, search engine optimization. This free webinar will be November 15th, and then we'll have another one on December 4th, which will lead us into our paid training series on SEO beginning December 5th the first class being on keywords. This is the first, of course, of our seven course series on SEO. You can find out more information and sign up for any of these classes by going to our website at jm-seo.org. As always, if you have questions, please email us or give us a call. Our contact info is on the screen, and we're always happy to help you out with anything you need. So have a great rest of your day, everyone, and we'll see you at the top of Google. Thank you. Bye-bye.